Welcome to the first episode on Frederick Max Muller by Rethinking Indologists. In this episode, we shall briefly learn about Max Muller's life, his works, and his vicious mission. He was born in Germany in 1823. He went through economic hardships during his early days. He studied some script under the tutelage of Frederick William Joseph Schelling in Berlin, Franz Bopp, and Eugene Bernoff in Paris. As some script was still new to Europe, his teachers themselves had limited knowledge of the language. Thus, Max Müller never mastered Sanskrit. His teacher Eugene Bernoff saw a large portion of the Vedas as priestly rubbish due to his limited understanding. As far as he was concerned, concepts such as Ano Bhadraha, Kratavo Yanto, Vishwataha were also meaningless. This would seriously impact Frederick Max Müller's thought process in the future. He never physically visited India. He worked at Oxford and mainly learned about India from the second-hand experiences that he gained from Hindu converts in London. This, along with his limited knowledge of Sanskrit, contributed to his partial understanding of the Vedas and India. He learned Greek, Latin, Arabic, Persian, English, German, French, and Sanskrit. Despite being very talented, he never utilized his intelligence in the right way. His aim was to misinterpret the Vedas so terribly that they would seem revolting to Indian scholars in the future. In 1892, he was the president of the Ninth International Congress of Orientalists in London. In 1896 he was appointed as a privy councillor by Queen Victoria Max Müller died in 1900 as he met a few brahmo samajis during his career he gained a deep respect for raja ram mohan roy he was also greatly impressed by ramakrishna paramahamsa due to his limited interaction with a few indian groups he could never gain a fuller understanding of india he gained access to the british east india company's manuscripts in london for his research The East India Company had amassed a massive treasure of manuscripts by cunning means from India. To have such a vast supply at his disposal was a great luxury in those days. He spent 25 years between 1849 and 1874 on the Rig Veda. He misinterpreted verses and intentionally wrote blasphemous statements against the Vedas with the aim of converting Indians to Christianity. He edited about 4 dozen volumes on the sacred books of the East. These books would brainwash many young and intellectual minds in the future and create a generation that would blindly question Indian scriptures. The upcoming episodes seek to critically analyze these volumes and expose the falsity of his words. He is mainly remembered for his translation of the Rig Veda and the Gifford lectures on religion. He also left behind numerous books that were mainly created to diminish the glorious culture of Bharatvarsha. It is high time for the truth to be re-established. His true mission on August 25, 1866, Max Müller wrote to Chevalier Bunsen, "India is much riper for Christianity than Rome or Greece were at the time of Saint Paul. The rotten tree has for some time had artificial supports because its fall would have been inconvenient for the government. But if the Englishman comes to see that the tree must fall sooner or later, then the thing is done. I should like to lay down my life, or at least to lend my hand to bring about the struggle." I do not at all like to go to India as a missionary that makes one dependent on the persons. I should like to live for 10 years quite quietly and learn the language, try to make friends and see whether I was fit to take part in a work by means of which the old mischief of Indian priestcraft could be overthrown and the way opened for the entrance of simple Christian teaching. From the life and letters of the right honorable Frederick Max Muller, volume 1, chapter 10. His intentions are quite clear. Imagine how badly his books shall criticize the Vedas when he wanted to destroy their meanings. Rethinking in Dolores shall rethink Max Muller's preface to the first volume of the Sacred Books of the East in the upcoming second episode. Let us explore the truth which he deliberately hid from us. We shall basically analyze his works using a primary analysis of the impact of his writings, using a psychological analysis and counter evidence to prove how he is wrong.